Alright, continuing with the tutorial series, we are ready to start recording. The first thing you want to do is actually find what you want to record. Now you can do that a couple different ways. Number one, you can have an idea of what you want in your head, something like a melody or whatnot. Or number two, you can use the machine sounds and find inspiration that way. And I really like to do that. Especially since browsing is so easy, I just like to scroll through kits and find something that catches my ear. So that's what I've done here and loaded up. I have this kit from a machine expansion, and I really like how it sounds. So once you find something you like, you also want to have an idea of what you want to record. So I have this loop played out in my head. And I want to set the machine tempo to match that tempo. Now if you happen to know the exact BPM, you can type it in up here in the software. Just click and enter with your keyboard. Or you can use the hardware. Now you can do that by adjusting it. So enter main mode by hitting the main button, and then make sure you're on tempo, and just use the knob to change the tempo. Or you can exit main mode, hit the control button up here, and use something called tap tempo. Now what this is going to allow you to do is to play this button in time with your beat, and it'll automatically set the machine tempo. So since my idea is this, I'm going to hit this button right here while holding the shift button in time, and the machine tempo will automatically be set. Now it's always a good idea to make sure that that tempo is actually what you want. So to do that, we're going to turn on the metronome. On the hardware, the metronome can be turned on and off using the shift and the play button. You can also turn on the metronome in the recording mode. To enter this, hold the shift and the grid buttons. You can scroll through and see that the metronome level can be edited, as well as a time signature. I'll just leave it on 1 over 4 for now. So my metronome is on, and now I want to actually hear the metronome play back. So it'll automatically turn on when you start playback, and to do that just hit this restart button here. You won't be able to hear it because of the way I'm recording, but you'll hear it when you do it on your own. Alright, so that sounds good to me. Now that I have my tempo set, I want to enter in my first pattern. So to do that, I'm going to hold the pattern button and then press this first pad down here. So this will load up my first pattern or loop. I can change the length of this by holding the pattern button and turning the knob. In the software, I can do the same by going over here clicking and dragging, or entering it in manually. So for now, I'll leave it on two bars long. So when you're ready to start recording, hold the shift and the record buttons. This is going to give you one empty bar before it starts recording. You can hear that the pattern automatically starts looping. If you don't like what you recorded, simply hold the shift and the pad 9 and that will clear it. I can record again. It's also very easy to layer on top. Once you have record mode enabled, anything that you play while the loop is playing back will be recorded. If you want to add more instruments, I like to do that on a separate group. So I'm going to head over there, and here I've loaded an electric piano. So you can choose another pattern, and this will stay independent of your first pattern. In other words, patterns are linked to separate groups. So following the same procedure as before, I'm going to load up the first pattern, set it to two bars long, and then record. So you can hear that it missed my first note. I'm just going to do the count in again to get that in. You can also record additional loops to add some variety. So I'm going to select my second pattern and then record again. You can choose between the different patterns in real time.
Okay, so I think that covers basic recording. Now we are ready to start editing these patterns.